being here. Just one reminder for that support. When Jake or Monica or Jamie or any of the family comes to your mind, you could say a prayer or reach out and tell them that you're thinking about them. Not just in the week, but in months and years to come. So that they know that everyone still cares rather than just today. To be gracious to the clergy and to the family, if you have a cell phone, if you could please turn it on to vibrate or off just so it doesn't disrupt during the service. Um, immediately following the service this year today, there is a lunch and fellowship at the Carcolan Township Hall. The best way to get there is to leave our parking lot out the back way here, first corner at the post office, turn to your left, and that is the signal light on M13. Turn left again and go to Parish Road. There's a blinking light there um, and turn to your left. And the township hall is about a half mile down on your left hand side. Rather than trying to get out on M13 out the front, it's a lot safer to go that way. So thank you very much. Hi, let me introduce myself. For those don't, who don't know me, I am Jake's Aunt Sherry. I'm his mom's sister, Micker. I know some of you guys know her as Michelle. I know her as Micker, and I'm going to call her Micker through this. And Jamie is Jamie. His real name is James, but it's going to be Micker and Jamie. So throughout this, you guys hear the words Micker and Jamie, the people who know who we're talking about, who we're referring to. She wanted this to be a memorial for Jake and about Jake. Andrew wanted it not to be sorrow for his death, but a celebration of his life. So all of us gathered here today are going to do this for them. That's our goal for today. Right? We're all in this together. First of all, I want to thank everyone for coming people who traveled many miles and many states away to be here, and especially his crew. Um, last night, seeing these men come and pay their respects to Jake, I seen the love and the respect they had for him, and it was um, from the heart. And also for the generosity of so many with their donations. The GoFundMe account, the last I checked, it's almost to $20,000. Who would have expected that in just a couple of days? There was donations taken at workplaces and probably places we haven't even realized yet. It's been truly amazing, and we as a family appreciate it more than you will ever, ever know. And when I say family, that's me. Family and we, that includes both Jake's family and Monica's family. By the amount of people we seen yesterday and today, there's no doubt that he was loved and his family's loved. There is one thing before we start. I want everyone to know, Noah has been patiently waiting to play ball. He has been counting down the days to play ball. His first game was on Sunday, and he wanted to play it for his dad. I'm happy to tell you he has two singles and one double. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Good job. And I guess um, I could say I have been there since the beginning with Jake, but not really the beginning, beginning, if you know what I'm saying. That was all Micker and Jamie at the beginning. Um, I just wanted to clarify, I wasn't there for that. 
<laughs> but he did make his appearance on August 4th, 1996, and our world was never the same again. God knew what he was doing when he made Jake. And as believers, we know in our hearts, when we leave this earth, our soul goes to heaven. I don't have to push that to anybody today. We know Jake is in heaven. He is reunited with his buddy Ryan, his grandma Maxine, and all the other family that was waiting. The ones he never met here while he was on earth. They were there to welcome him home. And I can guarantee you he's in very, very good company. So now I'm going to share some stories and memories that were told to me. I'm going to take when he was in kindergarten. Jake never talked too much. He was kind of quiet. And during testing, he refused to say his ABCs count to anything. And they were getting kind of worried. His parents were like, is he going to be ready for first grade? What is he going to do? And then one day, Grandpa Deep Lines had him, and he's in the back seat in his car seat. And he started reciting the alphabet. Grandpa was like, huh? When he was finished and he said them correctly, and this is what Jake said after, and I'll think of a little five-year-old in kindergarten. He said, and they think I'm dumb. <laughs> it was so Jake. Another time, Micker was at work and she got a call from school. Jake was sick. So she called Papa. Papa went to pick him up. I'll let you know, Jake was not sick. He just had to poop. And he was not poop at school. So he went to the office, had him call, and bring him home. So, and um, I wonder if he still had that problem. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, anyway, we're getting younger that. Um, his cousin Stacy shared oh, about catching a big fish with his bare hands. And taking Papa Deet Line with Papa Deet Line's granny body through the trails at Fort Custer. Now, if you guys know Fort Custer and ever been there, the trails are like this. They're not straight. They're up and down. Papa should have had a mountain bike, but he had a pedal bike. And he kept up with Jake and Stacy. They did. They um they made it. And Dad is here still to talk about it, so he was okay. And he, she also said, and how he would smile when Noah was born. He had a different smile. He had a better smile. And his smile grew bigger after he met Monica. And how he was so emotional at his wedding. You could tell that he just loved her so much. His cousin Mike wanted to share about the mummies. When we were on ferry boats, Jake was just a little guy. We were on the ferry going to Mackinac Island. And you know how the water shoots out of the back? Well, Jake's little mind, there was monkeys coming out of the back. <laughs> he seen them. I think at that time they were brown monkeys. But they were just shooting out. Nobody else could see them except Jake. And then after that, the monkeys were everywhere. There was monkeys sitting in trees, monkeys behind bushes, monkeys everywhere. And they were every color. And he had that for a few years. Um, I think he finally outgrew that. Right? He didn't want to keep more. <laughs> um, and he also stated, when Noah smiles and grins, he's so much like Jake. There was a time my husband and I Mike took him camping. He was about 11 years old. And we were canoeing across the lake and it started raining and we got to the shelter and we were there and he said you know boys Kason was with us we have to push the clouds out so Mike told the boys take their hands like this so they're taking their hands like this and then he said just push 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 Jake's looking at him like this guy's nuts <laughs> but they did it they pushed and pushed and pushed and I'll be dang if the clouds didn't clear and the sun came out. And I remember looking over at Jake and he's just like, how did that happen? What the heck just happened? 
careers. That was a really cool memory. Um, there was a time Jake, Jake was, we all know, he was always helping someone and did many jobs. He did a lot of jobs over his grandma and grandpa date lines. And there was one time him and a buddy were cutting down a tree. And grandma and grandpa are in the house, and all of a sudden they hear this biggest crash. And they're like, oh, shoot. This time, something happened. They thought it went through the house. When they got out there to investigate it, they looked, and it wasn't the house. It was a wind chime that when it hit, it just clanked, and they thought half their house was gone. <laughs> they got lucky. There was no insurance job that had to be cleaned. <laughs> there was also a time when Uncle Mark took him to Mr. Hot Dog to get a tree, a coney dog. He thought it was going to be a big tree going to Mr. Hot Dog to get it. But Jake never had a coney dog before in that time. Then you guys know about Mr. Hot Dog, you know how they have the hot dogs up there and all the stuff on the coney sauce are sitting up there. So, you know, this is going to be a big treat getting a coney dog. But when they went to order, Jake had, this is what he told the cashier, I don't want one of those dirty dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm thinking of the dirty dog phrase is still used today. All right, I was just silent for 30 seconds or less. So can you understand how long it felt for Grandma Deepline when she had to wait a meal for Jake? Jake was known to be 30 minutes, an hour, maybe two hours late, and maybe even sometimes later. But guess what? I can guarantee you he never had a cold meal. Might have been a little dry, but it wasn't cold. <laughs> Monica's mom, Tammy, shared one of the first times that Jake came over. It was in the summertime. He had a little bit of a tan bone, and they were having a meal. She looked at him, and then she asked him if he had any Mexican in him. Jake's reply was, not at this time. <laughs> Monica and Jake were cracking up. It took Tammy a few minutes to get <laughs> um, For me, personally, the biggest honor is when Monica asked me to marry them, and I thank her for that. And last winter, we were at one of Noah's basketball games, and I looked at these kids and said to him, dang, Jake, you sure make cute kids. He had that one down for sure. And I'm sure Baby Field will not be a disappointment to us. Um, now, Doug's Uncle Jake. Jake's. Said that wrong, sorry. And now, Jake's Uncle Dog has something to share with you. Okay. Morning. Morning. I'm Jake's Uncle. Of course, his favorite uncle. <laughs> Jake and I had a special bond. This is crazy. They meant so much to me. That they couldn't my name. This is amazing. Also, make a resting bird. Yes, Jake was going to be good. She knew she was having a boy. Still bought girls' clothes up until two years ago. Jake wasn't easy as coming into the world, and Micker's probably still in pain. If we're wondering, Micker did not just pray, just press Jake, and the press is at least not that <laughs> But she did make him an angel wear the wild clothes that he wore. One of them's over there. And then, like that picture over there. Heroes. And I take formal pictures of them, so there's always proof of what they have to wear. Also, Jake loved candy when he was little. You know, as he would get, him and I would always get the couch set. It was always that thing quite a kicker. He would also end up sleeping sideways to kick me out of the bed. 
also knew his feet rubbed every night so they fall asleep. After a day of camping and even third to the manager, what his feet look like and smell like. <laughs> <laughs> I should never do the shower. Tom and Dad took that responsibility and thanked God. Once he had known, told Dad that he wanted to buy a camper. And take his kids here. <laughs> Since he had so much fun camping as a kid. Of course, in the world today, knowing that he did the right thing to make lasting memories. So that's my diagnosis. It's not a phone call. <laughs> um, when Jake was around five, he used to call me off and talk for an hour or so. I loved our talks. Monkeys were a big thing, I guess. And he told me every time he saw monkeys in the tree. Best one, he would tell me about the bald beetles he had seen. Not sure as long as he consulted the beetles being bald or the beetles being beetles. Way is something you don't forget. You need to call off to protect it and take it on this to the structure. So those are my high back. This is for his parents. Jake was slightly silly if I told you they loved to sew when he was young. He got a sewing machine either for his birthday or Christmas, and for sure, for sure, it came from the home. He made a quilt that has gotten lost over many years. But if I had it, I'm sure he'd love to display it in his memoir for all his friends to see. You know how much he loved it. Jake drove a long way to work, almost three hours, four hours some days, every day to a job he started on his actual um, He loved his job because, because he Told me he just sat in here and just truck off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not looking at those pictures, I don't think that's true. He got involved in it. So he supported his family and he knew what a family made. Monica, Noah, Elsie, After Elsie was born, he said, No more kids. So we were shocked when Noah told us Monica was pregnant on each. That's true. So we figured Monica must have done something new or special. <laughs> Jake was so tough and sensitive at the same time. He was the two day he got married to his best friend. He had to go be by himself and walk away from here. He was just bawling. But I've come to realize that he was crying. Just knowing he had to dance the entire song. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing the pictures of Jake with his friends on post on Facebook, it's a great to see all those pictures. What a time he had with all of you. I don't know that there was a picture where he was not smiling. I don't think you all did. Jake, yeah. Friends like you don't come along very long. There's one picture posted where I swear you look, take the smoking joint. That's the term we use back then. What's it? Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> um, he, did, he wasn't the golden man. I thought I was not. Okay, bear with me. This is what we talk about. Short Grandma Gittler. Unfortunately, he passed away a few months before Jake was born. And she would have loved Jake being such a chunky baby boy. It means so much to me that you get to keep it with us. Went for monkeys and bald eagles together. I have to see if this goes correctly. Because I've heard it a while ago. Queen Elizabeth once said, nothing can be said to be going to take away the anguish. And you know this moment, 
Please remember this brief is the price you pay for. So very careful. I will give uh, except all this to an honorable you. I mean, in the middle, you I said, I love you to me. A couple of years ago, I said to Jay, you used to say you loved me when you were a kid. He said, I still love you, Uncle Clark. And Jay, I will love you forever. We're going to open this up to anyone else who has anything to share and trust us. If we get it, if you're nervous, but don't look back and say, I wish I would have. I know there's times I wish I would have had something at a funeral and I just was told by a sister-in-law that she wished she would have gotten out for her mother-in-law's funeral that was just a few months ago and said something. She says, just tell people to get up and say something if you need to. Remember, we might have a couple marriages, a few jobs, but we only get one celebration of life. Um, I know Mark is going to call uh, his dad and start us off, and then Zach, the brother, is going to say anything, and then we'll go from there. Just introduce yourself and say James Lay. Thank you. Good day, your When I first started out with the young gentleman, I used to show better door stuff. So I don't think it's beautiful for all of us. I guess my God, he's in my own name. Said no again. He's not ready. Understand. Someday soon, it will happen. Eventually, Jake made it through our door. We took him in with open arms. The day I found out Monica was going to change her name and we were going to gain a son. Jake asked for his permission to marry Monica. The funniest part of it was is we always went walleye fishing opening evening. So we drove up to Tawas. We were studying at the, on the edge of the Tawas River. We're casting away. Jake lands a fish. Oh. As time progressed on, he said, Mark, I have a question for you. Okay, Jake. Question never came out. The second fish he caught. I was like, cool, I'm using the same lure, same everything, I haven't got a way yet. <laughs> the next thing I knew, he says, I think I got another one. I said, really? I said, catch one more, I'm going to throw you in the river. <laughs> he laughed, we chuckled a little bit more. And then finally the question arose. I would really like to marry your dog. We can continue on fishing that night and celebrate as much as we could because I think we got home about three o'clock in the morning after the fishing trip. As time progressed, we tried to determine a date. It was 10, 10, 20. 
They did not want to get married that day because they wanted more friends and family to be with them. I told them it's going to be hard during this time of COVID. Let's just have a small wedding, continue on, and we will carry out with whatever time progresses. After that day, I gave his son, a grandson, that I will never forget. <laughs> God speak, carry on, everyone. Celebrate and don't forget. Thank you. I just want you guys to know during that, Noah came up and he wanted me to announce everything to, uh, to everyone on his game on Sunday night at 1.13 to 0. Morning, buddy. Mine's really bad. So, I know about me. Exactly. I know about half the room, um, actually less than that. Uh, for my job, I publicly speak every single day. It's one of the hardest things I have to do. So those that don't know about Monica's side of the family is when she was born, I didn't want her. <laughs> uh, I didn't want a Monica, I wanted a boy. I wanted a little brother. As time progressed, she dated some people. Um, <laughs> no one was ever good enough. I met him one night. We May or may not have been an establishment that serves beverages and we'll leave it there. But my sister walks up and says, Beth, you gotta meet this guy. I looked at him and I said, okay. she said, This is Jake. I said, Jake, if you hurt her, I'll kill you. <laughs> and uh, that kind of started the, the friendship that I had. Um, that was 2017. Deployed, come back. Every time I come home, I always got the same skill. Zach, you gotta warn me. My liver can't handle it. My liver can't handle it. You gotta warn me, you gotta warn me. I think it was on both sides. Our livers couldn't handle each other. It was a bad influence. Uh, so, should be better now, but we'll see. Um, then it came time that he said, Zach, I'm gonna marry your sister. I said, what took so long? You've only been waiting forever. So, I gained one of my best friends, a brother. The night before, we're setting everything up at the wedding. Again, didn't indulge hardly. I had to go to bed at a reasonable time. I had an early morning the next morning. We were in bed by like nine o'clock. Thanks. Um, but Jake goes, where are you sleeping? I said, with you. He goes, absolutely. One thing. I said, naked. It's good. <laughs> it's good. So do I. <laughs> so... We get inside the house and very early, 9.15 at max. And we walk in the bedroom and we're getting out of our skivvies. We look at each other and go, we're in the same underwear. <laughs> and I go, Mom, Christmas? And she goes, Mom, Christmas. <laughs> so, Jake, you're welcome. We're still wearing the same underwear today. But, uh, I gained a brother, I gained a best friend, I got to be an uncle, I gained an awesome hunting buddy, I'm going to miss him. So thank you, Jamie Michelle, for giving a best friend. And finally, you know, a brother I got to call. Thanks, 
Is there anybody else that would like to share anything? You're just sitting there saying, I have to say stories. Not to try. Um, no, I don't want to think. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for sharing those stories with us. My husband Mike took this song, took this from a country song and wrote it down. It's not what you take when you leave this world, it's what you leave behind. His beautiful wife and cute kids and the rest of his family and friends are left to carry on. And we all will. It'll be hard. We need it. Did you want to say something? We have someone coming up to say something. Thank you. Hi. Um, my name is Debbie Cantu, and I am Ozzy's wife. Um, he's the guy holding Jake's hand in those pictures over there. Um, when Jamie retired, he asked Osia to keep his eye out on Jake. And Jake, uh, Osia was like, ugh, oh, this kid doesn't know anything. Day by day, week by week, Jake's name was said more and more in our house. And then one day, my kids opened up my husband's lunchbox and his food was still there. And my kid said, Dad, you didn't eat your lunch. And he's like, no, Jake bought me burritos at McDonald's. So the next day, we see a half empty Pepsi container. And I'm like, oh, you had pop, you didn't drink your juice. He's like, no, that's Jake's. And this went on, on and on for weeks. And then I'm thinking, hmm, should I start to be jealous? I, I didn't see what was going on here. And, uh, Jake's name was said in my house like he lived there. He, he, sometimes my husband would come home and call my son Jake by mistake. He, he, he was his little brother. And um, all the crew that he worked with loved him like family. Anybody who works a lot knows that your work family becomes your family. He was with Jake more than he was with me. And... Um, I just felt like I was sitting there and didn't have anything prepared, but I didn't want everybody to know that how much my husband loves Jake and he will forever be said his name in our house. And he can't wait to share stories with Noah when he's old enough um, to hear about all the things his dad did and shouldn't have done at work. And so, I just want to miss this opportunity to let everybody know how much my husband loves Jake. I'm Karen Wolfian, and I live down the road, and Jake and Andrew, Jake was only about five years old, Michelle was in the driveway, they came back at the sliding door, I opened it up, for anybody, he looked at me, he said, can Robbie come out and play? And I started to laugh. This is my husband. I said, Oh my sons, just a minute, I yelled in the back of the room. I said, Hey Rob, somebody's here to see you. And he comes out and he says, Hey buddy, what's up? And he says, Can you come out and play? <laughs> and then he says, Yeah, what do you want to do? Go fishing. And my husband passed away. And when I was going through pictures to set out, all of his hunting and fishing pictures. They had all kinds of pictures of Andrew and Jake. And another time they came to the house, they were done fishing. I remember Jake coming up to me and he says, Don't listen to Rob, he lies. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, What are you talking about? He said, I caught him all. He didn't catch any of them. <laughs> and he was always oh, just such a funny kid. And I can tell you, they're the best neighbors. I love that kid. Is it? He's my own. 
and there is nothing he would do for me. He would be greatly missed. And I just love him more than anything. Hi guys, my name is Amelius. I uh, work with a little operator. And when uh, he turned uh, 18, he started working with me. And uh, yeah, you become, people become family. Even though I have a saying, uh, it doesn't even have to be blood. Sometimes there could be anybody, it, it's family now. And uh, he did become family. And, um, there's a lot to say, but I remember one time this year. <coughs> the year started, and uh, I told him, hey, you're doing good. You're doing a good job. Okay. Uh, I'm proud of you. And he looked at me like if you wanted to give me a hug, but I knew. That he knew that I was going to be living. <laughs> but uh, I was always on his ass. I was always <laughs> telling him, giving him advice, something like that. And he listened. He listened to me. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Beth Young. I, I was um, called to Jacob's Baby Center. I took care of being here with him. I gained so much from watching all my kids. You know, he was, I remember when he was little, you guys were talking about him. Was what I used to call my little chunky monkey, you know, because you know he was really quiet too, but he was just so fun and so good, and you know, I can't I can't talk about Jake without talking about Andrew because you know they were you know two two of a kind, you know two peas in a pod. But what the reason I got up right now is to talk about. Not only being able to take care of Jacob and Andrew when they were little, I gained a family. I got like, my best friend Michelle. I mean, even though I watched the kids for her and Jamie, they, they my partner Don and I go camping where they're at. They, we find out where they're going, where they're going to be at. We go and visit them, and. Um, I came to family. I got a Noah. I got a Noah. And I would never have that if it wasn't for, and you know, I used to say when I heard about Jake having the baby, and I called him my little boobs baby. Um, but he's, Jake is, or Noah is everything to me. And I really, I, I love him to death. Like, he's my home. In fact, two weeks ago, Michelle happened to come over. And who comes right next to him? But Noah, and he's got this bouquet of flowers for me. You know, it's the nicest thing that I love you so much. And you're always going to be my buddy. Always going to be my friend. And LT too, even though LT's not really much into me. I did, know, I, did, I, did watch, I did watch it for a while, you know. But then I ended up but after 42 years I had to say but you know what? Even today if anybody needs me, anybody you need me for anything, 
you need somebody to watch the kids, babies, you call me and I will be there in a heartbeat. <laughs> You're the love of my life, Michelle. Um, if there's anything that I could ever do, I will always be there. Same thing with Jamie. They're my, I like to say, partners in crime when we get to go, when I go camping with them. So I, I truly love them. Thanks. Okay. Jake's grandma, and I just want to share something with you. He always went camping with us. One time we went down to Fort Custer, and we had our oldest granddaughter, Stacy, with us. She was in college down there, and she was on the couch sleeping, going to sleep. And Jake and Andrew put their pajamas on, and I put mine on. We're trying to go to bed. <laughs> And Dick put his on, Grandpa put his on, and he come walking through, and Jake went up, put his pants down. I have never seen Grandpa be like so mad. <laughs> I just had to share that. That was our Jake curse. <laughs> How are y'all doing today? Uh my name is Evan Stevenson. I think some of you guys know me and some of the family don't, but uh, I just wanted to say I used to talk to Jake on the phone on the way home from work. I live over in Carroll every day. I mean, he would call me or I'd call him every morning or every afternoon to talk about what we did that day or what we was going to do that day. And, uh, I just wanted to say I know that for myself and many others in this room, I'm going to miss the, the laughs. You know, those goofy conversations that you have at 4.30 in the morning that not a lot of people, you know, know about or hear, but I know that we've all had those phone calls from Jake that just get your day going or, or finish your day out to forget about the stress from work and, uh, you know, really make you feel good at the end of the day. So just wanted you guys to know uh, I'm going to miss him and, and miss those smiles same as you guys. Thanks. I never did this before. My name's Anthony Clucky. Uh, Jake and his crew, they brought me in. Uh, I joined their crew. I was with them for a year and a half, two years. Uh, the bond that you can make with somebody is just, it's unbelievable. You work, you know, five, ten, six times a week, uh, talking every day. Uh, the warm welcome that he gave me was my first day there. They had me cutting the pipe, and Jake was like a little uh, happy puppy dog on my leg. And I just <laughs> thought to myself, Oh, what is going on here? Um, talking to him every morning. Um, and when I transferred over to another crew, him trying to get me back. And uh, I learned a lot from him. Uh, very thankful for him. And uh, I'm truly going to miss him. Thanks for your time. It's a long way back there to get it up here. <laughs> Hi, my name is Chaz McCullough. Um, I work in the office at Grady, but uh, Jake and I became close for the past couple of years and became a foreman. Um, we bonded over family. Uh, talked about Monica, Noah, Elsie, you guys all the time. Um, he and I are lucky enough to be similar positions, young family, kids, so um, it's really hit home with me. I don't imagine what you're going through, but Jake was 
He was a good man. Uh, loved him a bunch. I recently started working up north, so I was going the opposite direction of him. Uh, been lucky enough to share some of those phone calls uh, at the end of the day or in the morning. And uh, yeah, they're. He definitely brightened the mood. He's have a rough day. Talk to Jake. No matter what, that man made you happy. Um, he, he, he knew how to crack a joke. He knew how to have a good time. And uh, I'm going to miss the guy. Um, I was looking forward to the next 30 years working together. So, um, but I share a birthday with him. So uh, every single year, all the time. So. Um, I'm Bruce Young. Uh, there's a number of gentlemen I work at I agree construction. Uh, a number of gentlemen in this room uh, provided Jake with the uh, with the adult daycare. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Chris with the daycare. Uh, they provide him his daytime care in his adult years. I didn't know he came to work on his birthday. I knew he came to work when he was 18. Um, and in a, a very short number of years, uh, he learned a lot. And uh, he gained a lot of trust and respect. Uh, so yeah, we should be very proud of him. Uh, we're all very proud of him. Uh, about some, of that, some of the early mornings. Some of the guys talked about family. Uh, Jake and, and Jamie for, for 35 years, they they are our family. Uh, the guys in this room have, have become family. So, uh, it's very good to be any business. I just want to say thank you to the Field family for sharing him with our family. Uh, it's been great. And we appreciate that, that sacrifice on your side. We'll never forget Jake. Thank you. How's it going? My name is Kevin Mora. I was on the bike just like I every day. I was on the phone with Jake. At the end of work, yeah, whenever I have a call, he would always hear the phone saying, I just hung up on Monica, so it's better to be good. Half the time, he wouldn't need anything important, but just something just to be asked to hold the phone. And the thing that you talk on the phone with Jake is the last word that I was not going to check this back up. And I mean, every once. There's times where my girlfriend would FaceTime me at work, 
and Papi would be sitting right next to Jake. We'd be in our trucks right next to each other. And my daughter would always say, Papi, is that your boyfriend? At this moment, his photograph career, he would take pictures of us sitting right, right next to each other with the old jaw heart right around the picture. <laughs> you could make a whole, a whole poster of us like that one. Um, he, he was a really good dude, and I, I made really good friends with him over the past five, six years that, that I met him. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, it's not too late because then we'll be able to share anything. Thanks for coming along. I want to thank everybody who shared. I know it's very, very hard. Trust me, I know it's very hard to do this. And it also has a glimpse into another part of Jake's life. So thank you very much. Um, my husband Mike took this song, took this from a country song. It's not what you take when you leave this world, it's what you left behind. His beautiful wife and cute kids and the rest of his family and friends are left to carry on. But I do want to say one thing to Noah before I go further. I heard you took some flowers to Beth. I thought I was the only one you took flowers to. You were taking flowers all over, aren't you? <laughs> and, um, oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> um, it's the rest of us, his family and friends are left behind to carry on. And we all will. And we have baby field to welcome in the fall. We have something to look forward to. I asked Monica what she'd like to say, a song or whatever she wanted. Her words were so simple and so powerful. I love him and miss him so much. And she picked out a song <coughs> for him to play. Okay, this is a song she picked out for him. The times we went flowing without knowing where we were going and Thanks for being with me. 
Today. I've had one good speech in my life, and that was here. That is Jess Fastro. My brother, the passionate side of my mom, the impulsive side of my dad. I got level headedness in the morning for my dad. I'm going to bring this couple of stories that everyone's told together. What they didn't tell was Grandma's bike was ruined when we went on a trail. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma went down. Me and Jake went around the jumps. Grandma didn't have jumps. <laughs> Only the pedal ones. He had jumped the two jumps. Both rims were bent. Grandma was not happy. <laughs> Here we went. The next year, we went back to work with Custer. They had their own bikes. But Grandma had the new one. Grandma had a pen race. So. <laughs> He would uh, still go ride with us even after he wiped out going down that hill. I remember a couple of times there, Jake said, fell to. Uh, I would like to break this into different parts of Jake's uh, life. His younger life, he taught me that it's better to be pissed off than pissed on. <laughs> My mom and dad thought it would be a good idea to get some airsoft. <laughs> and Jake was playing, and that I said that whizzed by my head. He says, "I'll whiz on your head." <laughs> well, you know what? He did. <laughs> so uh, there's a point in time where it's it's definitely very pissed off and pissed on. And I think he knows that too because he uh, that was one of the good points we got into. There's tons of memories that I can share from our childhood, but. I don't know where she's at. A little bit. Uh, now we can actually talk about her here uh, because maybe statute of limitations that <laughs> ran out or she can't be arrested. Like uh, maybe one or two people out there know why his uh, S10 went from a friendly body truck to a steak side truck overnight <laughs> at three o'clock in the morning. Who would know why? We worked on that in the morning, but there's a few guys out there that know why that's. Jake, before he met Monica, was 110% on the go, on the run. 110% in every thing he did. And I don't think he would have had the time that we had with him if she wouldn't have slowed him down <laughs> to at least 85%. Monica really bring the best out in Jake. <laughs> Noah slowed him down a little bit, but he would still do wheelies up and down the road all day. That would stop him from doing whatever he wanted when he wanted. There's a lot of times where I couldn't understand how Jake found money to buy that new bike, buy that new bike, buy that new thing. But he figured it out. Don't want to ramble. 
But I really want to thank everybody that came out and reached out to me, my family, and my friends. The work friends that he had, I did not understand the scope of that company that he had worked for. And I want to personally thank each and every one of you guys that came down and up and wherever anybody came. He started yelling at me in Spanish. I, <laughs> I had no idea what he was saying. <laughs> you know, the first the first week we were talking, we were in the garage. He was like, I don't know what the fuck these guys are saying. <laughs> They're coming up to me and speaking Spanish. And I said, I don't know Spanish either, but <laughs> good luck. But again, you have hooked on Spanish. I have that yet. <laughs> What's the shovel? We say shovel. Pala. Pala. He's like, Pala. Yeah. <laughs> shovel. He grabbing the, she's grabbing the shovel. You guys really bring the best out of Jake. And I really want to thank you guys for that. But there's just so many stories I could go on all day. I really want to thank everybody that was there for him. Vicky, Seth, Blake, Brian. There's people I'm doing this. Bernie, Patrice. There was so many people that made Jake the person he was. And most of that was you, Monica. No. And I'll see. They probably saw side out to Jake, which he always tried, but I try not to. I just really want to thank everybody for coming. Being here to support our family and friends. Rambled, I should have put down. I should have wrote some shit down. So I didn't want to backtrack. Girl, I don't want to say this. When I said I could do every bigger thing, I spent forever with you. But if I leave this world, maybe a little too soon. At first, I have to say, I hope you find someone else. You can make my trust in better ways. Just drive me crazy. Girl, I don't want to say this. When I said I could do every bigger thing, I spent forever with you. Girl, I hope and pray You and me grow A few lines on our face A few million stories told But if I leave this place Find another hand to hold It hurts like hell to say But make sure you know he can have a trust in that little girl. He can have his house and play his house. Let me fish in all of my old notes. But I want to never have the love I have for you. Oh, he's never made a play. There's no way to see what I see. You can follow my stuff, burn it all down. It's really your love, I won't take you to the grave. This concludes the services. Once again, we remind you of the meal and fellowship at the Cartolan Township Hall. Remember back around.
supposed to carry through in terms of your left and on your left hand side. Um, if you wish to come up and bid your goodbyes, you may, or you may go directly to the hall and wait for Monica and the family to arrive. Thank you very much. Thank you.